evening everyone. Welcome to COHR News, Channel 302. I'm Tom Tucker and this is your 7 o'clock news. First up, the weather news from Ollie Williams. How's the weather, Ollie? It's raining sideways, Tom! Whoa! Thank you, Ollie. Today's top story. A new casino has just opened on the UBC campus and has already become a big success in its opening week. Hordes of students are already gambling for their tuition and books money. Some students have benefited from winnings, while others were not so lucky. Joining us today is expert gamblingologist Brent Carpenter, here to walk us through some of the decision-making processes that can be costly in the casino. Hi, Brent. Oh, hi, Tom. Great to have you. All right, our first clip follows a gambler playing Baccarat and keeps on betting more because he's sure he will win after seven consecutive losses. It's been like seven times in a row now that Bank has won. I know it's going to be player next. I know it is. I'm betting everything. That's place, sir. No! This is a common example of a gambling pitfall. It's called the misconception of chance, more commonly known as the gambler's fallacy. The player tends to see unrelated and random events as somehow being related to one another. The main reasons leading up to this misconception are the gambler is unable to estimate the probability of rare and infrequent events. He tries to correlate past and future statistics to find a pattern and the gambler fails to understand every correlation does not have a cause and each event is independent. Interesting stuff, Brad. All right, a psychology professor at the University of British Columbia is performing a case study on students regarding another decision-making bias that affects gamblers. Students, please indicate on your survey what you believe the likelihood is of an average gambler, gambler who plays $500 per day, three times per week for one year, is of winning a jackpot. How many jackpots do you think the gamblers will win? And do you think the gamblers will have large jackpots or small jackpots? What do you think the value will be? Please indicate this on your survey. Why do we tend to overvalue the chances and potential winnings of gamblers? Two students participating in the study group explain their answer. They're always reporting on my local news station about lottery and casino winners almost once a week. These winners always seem to have prizes over $100,000. My grandfather gambled at a casino all his life and won all the time, even $40,000 at one time. He isn't that lucky a guy, so I assume that most gamblers must do that well. The availability bias is the decision-making bias we are attempting to attack with this study. Preliminary results show that students tend to drastically overestimate the chance a gambler has at winning a jackpot, as well as exaggerate the dollar value of their winnings. The opinions reported in this study demonstrate an obvious availability bias. This is when the frequency of a rare event is estimated to be more probable based on the subject's ability to recall an example. This can be skewed by media coverage, personal anecdotes, emotion or sentiment attached to certain results, etc. In gambling, individuals tend to have a positive emotional reaction to large wins, and the public tends to have a greater exposure to such stories. So the availability of information indicating that gamblers win big is much more prevalent, leading them to the false conclusion that this is probable, an error of availability bias. We now set out to conduct our own experiment on another decision-making bias known as the framing effect. One of our interns, Mike Goldstein, was given $500 to use at the casino. So Mike, you still have $200 in your pocket. You can quit now and gain that money to spend on whatever you want, or you can play more with a 40% chance of winning the rest of the money back, and a 60% chance of winning nothing. Well, I am an intern and I really could use that money for groceries. I think I'll keep the $200. But Mike, think about it again. You have already lost $300. You could play more with a 40% chance of losing nothing, and a 60% chance of losing the remainder. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I can't afford to lose all that money. I am gonna go back and play some more. We can see that Mike's answer depends on the way we pose the question to him. You see, Mike, your choice is different because these choices were expressed to you using different language. The discrepancy in choice between this parallel option is in essence the framing effect. In the first problem, a positive frame emphasizes money gained. In the second, a negative frame emphasizes money lost. The alterations in the language underlie the differences in the preferences. Wow. I don't understand. 